Okay, so today's daf yomi is Babakama daf chaf alaf Babakama twenty one. Hold on. Okay, today's daf yomi is Babakama daf chaf alaf, a beautiful daf. So Shalchi Rabbi Abba Bar Zabda Lamari Bar Mar. So Rabbi, we're discussing the case of Zenen Avizel Ochaser. Where one person is benefiting, whereas the other person is not losing anything. In the classic case of the Gemara, the guy who was, what it was anyway, not renting out his courtyard, and somebody else comes into the courtyard and stays there. And this guy's benefiting because he would have rented out a courtyard otherwise. But the other guy's not losing anything because he wasn't looking to rent out his courtyard. So does the guy who took the space in the courtyard, is he, is he chayiv? Does he have to pay? The uh, Gemara says, Shoch Ere Rabbi Abba Bar Zavda Lamari Bar Mar. Rabbi Abba Bar Zavda sent a question to Mari Bar Mar. He says, Buy me name Rav Huna. I test the question from Rav Huna. Dar Bachatzer Chavero Shomi Daito. Somebody who lives in his friend's courtyard without his consent. Zarcha Alosla Scharolo. Does he need to pay for him? Does he need to pay or not? Adahachi. In the meantime, Nach Nashi Rav Huna. Rav Huna died. Rachman Lutzlan. So I'm only Rabbi Barafuna. So Rabbi, the son of Rafuna, said, Mari. So he says, This is what my father taught me about this question, Mishmei de Rab. And he said, He said, Zenen of Zelo Chaser, if one person is benefiting, the other guy's not losing, you don't have to pay for it. And then he also taught us a second law. He said, If you rent out a house from Ruvain, you have to pay Shimon. Mari asked the question, Shimon Mayavi Diyase. Why does he have to pay Shimon? What's Shimon doing here? Who well, we're all son where's Shimon? So he says, No, Hakikamar, this is what it means. Nimsa Bayashal Shimon, that if he if he if if Ruben rents a house and then he discovers it that it was really Shimon's house, then Maulusar, then he has to pay Shimon. So the Gemara says, Tarati, these two cases seem to be in contradiction to each other. In the first case, you're saying Zen and Zelo Khazar, you're saying your potter that if one guy is benefiting, the other guy is not losing anything. But in this case, he's saying you have to pay Shimon. But Shimon didn't know anything about it, so why does he have to pay Shimon? So the Gemara says, okay, we're talking about two different circumstances. In one case where he was looking to rent out the house, that's why you have to pay Shimon. In the other case, the house he wasn't looking to rent it out, so therefore he doesn't have to pay Shimon. Therefore, he's potter. So the Gemara says, in Renami, we have the same teaching. Somebody who lives in his in his in the courtyard of his friend, Shalomidaito, without his friend's consent, he doesn't have to pay for it. But somebody who is renting a house from the people of the city, and he has to pay the money to the owners of the house. So the Gemara asks the question, Bawan, my Avidito. Why does he have to pay the owners? What are the owners doing? So the Gemara explains, this is what the this is what the teaching was. Nimsu Obalam, that if he then discovers that there were owners in this house, Malan Lanslar, he has to pay them for the house. So the Gemara seems to say Tarati is and aren't these two rulings contradicting each other? First case we say if you rent out from somebody without their knowledge, you're exempt. In the second case we say that in the second case we say that you have to pay the money to the owner. So the Gemara says two different circumstances. It depends whether the house was was supposed to be rented out or you were looking to rent it out. You had a question, Jeff? Yeah. I, I, presumably, if the owner finds out that someone's living in his house, he could remove him. Well, no. So the post him are very clear that if the owner knows beforehand the owner knows beforehand that this guy wants to come. He can stop him from beforehand. But once he's living there, once he's living there, once the guy's living there and the owner doesn't intend to use the property at all, that's what we're talking about. If he doesn't intend to use it, obviously if the owner wants to come back and use it, then he could kick the person out. But if he's not intending to use it at all, that's the question. So, so you, don't have like, him, you don't have an absolute property right. I don't know what that means, but I know that well, in this case, uh, in American law, 
if you own property, you have the right to exclude anybody from using it, even if you don't want to use it. Well, that's the that's exactly the that's exactly the dispute here. One person is benefiting, the other guy's not losing. So, do you have a right by halacha to tell the guy, well, "I don't care that not I'm losing, not losing. He's not losing rent, but you could say he's losing the control of his property. Well, so the Gemara already discussed on on yesterday's staff that if there's somehow the property is being damaged, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the property is being damaged in some way. We're talking about the fact that you just don't want this other person in your property. And that, and and in those circumstances, where Gamar is going to say that that's the dispute. But we're ruling that the person doesn't doesn't have to pay under those circumstances. So Amarav Shora, Amarav Huna, Amarav Adar Bachatzar Chaver Shlomi Daito Sarcha Alososar. So somebody who lives in his friend's courtyard, without knowledge, does not need to pay him. Why? Mishum Shenemar Ushiya Yukat Shaar. Just the obvious, if there is a, there's, so Rashi gives two approaches. Either there's a demon named Shia, or when there's nobody living in the in the place, the the house will be destroyed. That's the imp- impact of it. I mean, say, empty houses are not good. We want people living in them. And Amar Baravashi, the Dichazi, Menagev Kisora. I saw this demon and he was goring like an ox. Rav Yosef, Amar Beitva, Meitva. Yes, if that a house needs somebody to be living in it. Let's say the house was being used for straw and grain. So according to the approach, it says that an empty house is a problem. Well, then you solve that problem by just putting straw in it. But according to the approach, it says you need somebody living there. Then straw and wood is not enough. You actually need somebody living there. Meaning to say, somebody living there sees what the problem is and he fixes it. So the guy who's squatting is actually doing a favor to the actual owner of the house. There was a guy who built a mansion on the trash of the orphans. Rav Nachman took the house away from him to pay the orphans the rent the guy owed. So maybe Rav Nachman's in the position that you do need to pay the person if you're living in his courtyard without his permission. Mar says no. No, there was originally some people from Kar- Karman in living there. The other way, Yasmi So they were giving, they were paying the, they were paying the orphans. So it was a place that was supposed to be rented. Then this guy kicked them out. So now this guy, this, these people have to pay the orphans. I'm always Zilfai Sinol Yasmi. He told them go pay the orphans, and they didn't listen to him. He didn't listen to the to Rav Nachman. So Agve Rav Nachman have Tanya Mene. So Rav Nachman sees the the mansion. Gemara says Keitza Mishalemes Mashanenis. We had said in our Mishnah that if you're in the public domain, if the ox is walking across the public domain, you have to pay according to what you eat. But if the ox goes into the private domain, then you're liable for damages if the ox eats. Amar Rav. So Rav says Uvimichazeres. Rav says this refers to a case where the ox sticks its head into the private domain and eats it while it's walking along the public domain. So then you have to pay for the damages of eating, of the damages involved in eating, not just for the amount of the value of the food it needs for lunch. And Shmuel says, Shmuel says, even if you're in the public domain and the ox sticks its head into the private domain, you're still going to be Exempt from damages. Excuse me. So, according to Shmuel, how do we have a situation where you're liable for eating in the in the private domain, where the ox is liable? No, we must be talking about a case where where the ox actually left the public space and went and stood on the on the side. The Ikadimasni Lahashmata Baipinavshi. Some some people taught this dispute between Rav and Shmuel as its own discussion. Mechazera said if the animal just sticks its head to the side, Rav says you're Chayev, so Shmuel Amar Patura. Rav says you're Chayev, and Shmuel says you're exempt. So how does Shmuel have a situation where you pay according to the damages? 
Hishavka or Ochava, must be talking about a case where the animal left the side of the road, left the public street, and stood on the side of the street. So Masa Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak, Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak challenges Rav. It says, Mi peta chachanus, that if the animal eats from the entrance to the store, Mishalemes ma then it has to pay according to the damage that it did. So under those circumstances, if the animal eats from the side of the road, the, the, you have to pay according to the damage that it did. So, excuse me, just the opposite. If the animal eats from the side, from the front of the store, it only pays for its lunch. It doesn't pay for the damages. What's a scenario where it eats from the entrance to the store and it only pays for what it ate, not the damages? That must be talking about a case where the animal sticks his head. And we say, you don't pay damages, you only pay for the lunch. So this is a question around Rav's position. So who most of all, who mefarqa, the kind of the Karen Zavis. No, there we're talking about a case where the store actually was, it was on a corner and you went out from a large area into a narrower space and the store was in the public space. And so therefore the animal, even though it ate from the entrance to the store, the owner of the store should have been more careful. And therefore the owner of the store has no recourse. Ikadami, alternative version, that if the animal actually sticks his head into the private space and eats, everybody's going to say he's going to be liable. Kipuigi, when are we talking about b'mekatze? When are we talking about in a case where b'mekatze makam mirushuso or shusarabim? We're talking about a case where he's mekatze, where he basically is mekatz and makom mirushus or just around that the guy, the owner of the space, had allowed the public, the public to have access to that space, and he stuck part of his food there. The hachi itmar, amar rav, and this is how we learn it. Rav says loshna al mechazeres. Rav says when do we say you're liable for damages? Only in the case where the animal stuck its head there. Of a mekatz and makom mirushus or just around petura. But if the guy had actually given you space. Given that space to the public, then the animal eats it, he's exempt from damages. Shmuel would say, in that situation, you're liable if the animal eats it. Why? Maybe we're going to argue about the case, that this is similar to the case of a pit in one's own domain. What do you mean the case of a pit in one's own domain? That if you have a, a space, and you give it over to the public, and in that public there was a pit, and in that space you gave over there was a pit, and now this pit is going to be damaged. Then, and now this pit does damage. So do we say that you're responsible for, for putting the pit in public? Rav, Amar Potter, Rav, who says that in this case, with the, with the territory that you gave over to the public, the person who eats from you is going to be exempt because Kasavar Borber Shusokhaev, he's going to say that since you put the food in a place where the animal could slip, just like the pit will be, you're liable for the pit, so too you would have been liable for the food if the animal slipped on it. And so therefore, if you put something in a dangerous situation and another animal eats it, the animal is exempt. But Shmuel Damar and Shmuel says that you're liable because he's of the position, because Barber Potter. He says, if you put your pit and then if you have your backyard and you make it ownerless and then the pit is amongst it, you're exempt. So so to here, even if the animal would slip on your pit, on your food, the animal would have been exempt. And so therefore... <clears throat> the, the owner would have been exempt, and so therefore the <clears throat> the owner is liable for eating your the owner is liable for eating your food for damaging the food. Amar Rav Rav would say no. Really, I could tell you we're on top of Papa from the bays. But Alma, in general, I would say Borber Shuso Potter that if a person makes their area ownerless, and there's a pit there, he's exempt. But why in this case are you liable? Shani Yachad, the Amar Lav, the reason why here in this case, where he's going to say, you're liable for, why why, why in this case is Rav going to say you're exempt for the damages? Because he could say, Lav kol kaminoch, the mekaravas lo pay rusech, or just around me. He said, hey, you, should have, you should not have brought your fruit closer to the public domain. Mechayevas lo torai, and made my ox liable. Shmuel says, Amar ba'am, borber shuso eschayev, Shmuel says, in general, an ox in, the, in his domain is liable. Because he say, why does he say, why is a pit liable? He could have said, I had no idea that your pit was there, and that's why I fell in it. Peros, 
in this circumstance where the space is really his, and he, we're just worried that the animal is going to slip on the fruit, could he really say, I didn't know? He sees it with his own eyes. The animal should have seen it and avoided it. So the Gemara says, let's say that this case over whether or not the animal sticks his head to the side and eats it, if the owner is liable, is a machukas tanayim. The tanya, if you eat from the if you eat from the middle of the street, you have to pay according to the benefit of what you ate. But if you eat from if you eat from the sides of the street, then we're going to say you have to pay according to the damage that you did. That's the position of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda, whereas Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Wazir, Omer, Ein Darko Echo El Ahalech. An animal, it's, it, it's, it's proud, it is, does not typically eat, it just walks. So the Gemara says, well, what's the position? Rabbi Yosi, Hayani Tanakama. Isn't Rabbi Yosi the same thing as a Tanakama? El Machazeres, Ika Benayo. Don't we want to say that the distinction between them is Machazeres? The Rabbi Meir is sa- saying that what's the case? Where, where you're liable, only if you're actually standing on the side of the public domain. But if you stick your head in there, you're going to, if the animal just sticks its head, it's uh, it's exempt. Whereas the Rabbi Yossi is saying, no, that that's unusual. And so therefore, if the animal, the animal typically doesn't stick its head in and eats, it just typically walks. And so therefore, if you're, you're going to be liable if the animal will eat in that manner. You're liable for damages. So the Gemara says, well, no. The koyama mechazeres. Tanakam is over mechazeres. Not me. Mishal and mashinenes. Tanakam is in the position that for Mishal lemes it pays just what it benefited, not the damages. Rabbi Yosi is over Mishal lemes mashesi. No, the verse is no. Koyama mechazeres. Ikaradi kishmo. They either could say like Rav or Shmo. Ha'hacha be'bir besade achar kamifogi. Here they're arguing about a case where. The implications of going into another's field below Bereshit Rabin. It means say you're only liable if you go into another's field and not into the public domain. So Mar Savar Beer Besodei Acher below Bereshit Rabin. One says you have to be in another's field. If you're in the public domain, you're not liable. Mar Savar Beer Besodei Acher below Bereshit Rabin. You're only liable if you go into another's field, but not if it's in the domain of the Mazik. Mar says the domain of the Mazik. Of course, you're not liable. Bereshit Rabin claim a Peircha Bereshit Rabin. My boy. I can always say, what's your? Why do we need a verse to tell us that? That if it's in my field, of course I'm not liable. El the Elf of Rabbi Oshaya could be not. No, so they're arguing about the cases of Elf and Rabbi Oshaya. Remember, we said that Elfa was saying that if you're in public and the animal st- eats off the back of the other animal, whether or not you're liable. So that's a dispute between Rabbi Meir and the Tanakam. Uh, it's in Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Eliezer, and Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda. The, and that uh, Elfa said earlier that if the animal eats off the other back of the other animal, it's going to be liable, even in public. And Rabbi Oshaya's position was that if the animal stands on its hind legs and eats from the other one's basket, it's going to be liable. So Rabbi Meir's on the position that he's always exempt if he's in public. And he doesn't have to pay for damages, even in the circumstance of, uh, of Ilfa and Rabbi Oshaya, whereas Rabbi Yossi says, no, that's unusual for the animal to do that. And so therefore, he's going to be liable, and, and he's going to be liable for, for goring under those circumstances. Okay, we're up to um, the, the net. Yes. I, I asked this last night too, I think, but I don't know if I understood the answer. If if they do it in an unusual way, like turning its head right. is unusual. So, so does that not make it Karen, or is there a category right, that of makes shame? It, that- that makes it goring, right? And that's why he pays half damages, exactly. Oh, so it's only half damages. It's not the full damages here they're talking about. Yeah, once it's oh, done, it's okay. done. So the Gemara, said, the Mishnah says that Kalva Gedi Shekav to Mirosh Agag Meshiver Once you have a dog and a goat that jumped off the top of the roof and broke the utensils, you pay full damages. Meshalim Nezek Shalim Neishein Muadin because. You have to expect that that's what these dogs and these goats are going to do. They're going to jump off the roof. If a dog takes a, a biscuit which has fire on the end of it, 
and goes to a haystack, it eats the biscuit and then lights the stack on fire. For the, for the biscuit, it has to pay full damages for eating. But for the stack, that's unusual. So he's scoring, so he has to pay half damages. So the Gemara says, Time with the cup to why is the dog and the goat liable? Because they jumped. But if they fell off, they're exempt. Alma Kasava, we see from here, that even though at the beginning they were negligent, leaving a dog on the roof unattended, and even though in the end it fell off, you're exempt. And Tanya Nami indeed we learn this in the price. And then the, the dog or the goat that jumped off the rosh, the head of the roof, and they broke the utensils, Mashaim Nezik Shalim. They fall damages. But not for Paturin. If they fall, it's exempt. This makes sense according to one who says, if it starts off with negligence and ends with onus, it's exempt. According to the one who says you're liable, Michael and Maymar. What's why would you say he's liable? So the Gemara says, I'll tell you why he's liable under those circumstances. According to the one who says that if you if you start with negligence and then you end up as an onus, you're going to be liable. Why in this case are you exempt if the if the dog falls off the roof? So the Gemara says, I'll tell you why you're exempt. It's going to go into Mikarve, Kale, Mugabe, Kosal, because the utensils were right next to the wall. Because if he had actually jumped, it wouldn't have fallen on it. So the, the beginning, it's not negligence, because if the animal would have jumped, it wouldn't have done problems. So sometimes even if it falls off, you're going to be liable under those circumstances. Why? If it would have been a shaky wall. So the Gemara says, What's the reason? Because we would have you should have realized that the bricks would fall. The Gemara says, Well, so so for nafal archai. Well, nafal inu. Well, in the end, the bricks didn't fall. He's the, the only the animal fell. So 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 he lost the she have a sofa but onasu. So therefore, this is the case. He should be liable because he he started off with negligence, and in the end, it was an onus. But he shouldn't have put him on the roof in the first place. So Gemara says, no, it's shuchah because of tsar. No, we're talking about a case where the wall itself, the the was very narrow. And so therefore, he should have thought that the dog was going to fall off. And so therefore, as a result of that, that's why he's going to be liable under these circumstances. Okay, so that's today's beautiful daf. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Well, 